Hey everybody, it's TR here, and uh, this time we're going to be talking about every RVer's favorite subject, uh, that's black tank maintenance. I'm here to give you the straight poop on maintaining your black tank. Now, there's a thousand double entendres that could be shared, but we'll stick to the topic at hand. Uh, this episode's going to be educational, there's going to be a little bit of science in it, some chemistry, a little bit of microbiology. So if you're not into science, then you probably need to tune out. Also, if you are offended by the words merd, caca, doo-doo, <laughs> human waste, aeolian deposit, poop, or what seems to be my favorite in this series of videos is large particulate matter, or any of the other 3,443 words that are used to describe what we're talking about today, well, you probably need to tune out too. <laughs> but if you want to get the straight poop on it, stick around because I'm going to tell you how to maintain your black tanks and make it easy so it's not a chore, they don't stink, and you'll actually enjoy taking care of them. Well, maybe. So if you do a Google search, you're going to find about 61 million entries around the topic of the GEO method. And uh, I use a modification that I like to call the bio GEO method, and I'll explain that to you here in a minute. The GEO method originally uh, kind of was probably most expounded on by a guy named Frank Bruni from Arkansas. And uh, he might be just the guy that got it on the most forums, but uh, his idea is that you use uh, a detergent, a water softener, chlorine bleach, and you always dump full tanks. And that method works. I've used it. It works. But given my sort of more ecological bend, I wanted a method that uh, didn't use chlorine bleach to start with because chlorine has implications uh, in the environment. And I learned to not use chlorine many years ago when I had a house that was on a septic system. And chlorine bleach and septic systems in small amounts is okay. But bleach, in its very nature, just sterilizes water by super oxidizing everything in the water. And I'll explain what some of that means here in a minute, I hope. So Bruni's method says you use the bleach, the water softener, and the detergent in every tank and that you flush from a full tank. There's a reason for flushing from a full tank and I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a minute because that's probably the most important part of the way that I maintain my system. Besides the geo system, there's a thousand different ways that you can try to maintain your black tanks and keep them from stinking and keep them flushing correctly. And brother, I've tried them all and none of them work as good as what I'm going to explain to you today. And if you don't maintain your tanks correctly, eventually you're going to be faced with a, a really clogged up, plugged up system. And your only recourse is going to be this. So I lived with a bad black tank for a long time until I finally figured out how to do it. So some of the most common treatments that you can find today, and I think probably 80% of most RVers, probably use something like this. Okay, this is just Camco's TST RV Toilet Tank Treatment. And really what it is, it's a water softener with a lot of fragrance. So basically all it's doing is softening the water. All water is hard in some way or another. In the west here, in desert areas, it's hard because there are a lot of free calcium ions floating around in the water. In the east, Typically, if there's a lot of free iron ions floating around in the water. And when you soften the water with something like Calgon or something else, then what you're doing is, is that you're tying up these free ions, which makes the water a better solvent. So just think of it this way. When you soften water, you're making water wetter. So if you have lived in a house that didn't have soft water, you notice that when you soaked uh, that you didn't get a lot of bubbles, but then you go to a hotel where you have really soft water and you use the same amount of soap in your hair and you've got this mess that it takes you five minutes to wash out and it never feels like you get clean. There's, you always sort of have that little greasy feeling. When you soften the water, you're kind of taking out uh, some of these uh, materials, these ions as I call them, the hardness of the water. You're tying it up with some other material which makes the water wetter a better solvent and it uh, makes it so more can dissolve into the water. My modification to the BioGeo method uses Braxo. Friend, it's so easy to have every washable thing in the house Borax clean and Borax sweet. Not chlorine bleach. And a detergent. Occasionally 
I prefer Dawn. I've also used laundry detergent. I decided the Dawn was a little less expensive. And when I say I use them occasionally, I use them maybe once a month. Or I use them to scrub my tanks when I'm moving down the road. So I'm currently parked and have been since the 1st of November, and here's the 1st of March. So I've been here uh, something close to four months. Was that November, December, January, February? Yeah, so I've been here four months. So I've been sitting here parked for four months, and I haven't been able to drive around and clean my tanks. So when I leave here, I'm going to be sure and f flush my tanks thoroughly. Put about 15 gallons of water in it. I'm going to add a half a cup of Braxo and a quarter cup of Dawn dish soap, and then I'm going to drive to my next destination, wherever that might be. When I get there, I'm going to stop and I'm going to flush my tanks then. Even though my tanks run clear when I'm through with my flushing, I'll get all kinds of dark nastiness out of them after that, running down the road and the water sloshing back and forth. It helps to kind of scrub the tanks out and all of that will fall to the bottom, flush it out, and, and it really helps to keep your tanks clear. And I highly recommend that you do that regularly if you're traveling down the road. If you're not, then I have found that I don't treat my tanks except about once a month. And the only time I do stop to treat them is when I'm starting to get a little bit of odor and when I add water to the tank, it doesn't make the odor go away. My method involves lots of water, the occasional borax and detergent treatment. Even though I'm sitting still, I still put that in. It's just, it helps to break up stuff that's sticking to the walls of the tank and on the floor. And when I'm flushing my tanks, I don't start my flusher and then open my tank and just let it go because that's not going to get you what you need. When you flush a full tank, it helps to break up the sludge and stuff that sits in the bottom of that tank. Your black tank will have layers in it. One will be a layer of really thick, sludgy material. Then there's going to be a water layer sitting on top of that, and that's going to be full of bits of paper and uh, all kinds of other stuff we don't want to think about. And then on top of that, it's probably going to be a layer of scum. In the sludgy area of the bottom of the tank, you're going to get what are known as anaerobic bacteria. Anaerobic bacteria thrive in the absence of oxygen. Okay, that's important. So I know that I'm going anaerobic, I'm allowing that bacteria that produces the stinky smells to take over and it's making it unpleasant to be in the room in the RV. I'm sure many of you have experienced that. But by adding water, there's always oxygen dissolved in water. It's, it's, that's just the way it is. There's a lot of chemistry behind it that I explained, but uh, that's a whole other video in itself. But by adding water to my tank, first I'm diluting it a little bit, so I'm adding a little bit more water, um, helping to dilute the solution, but I'm also adding oxygen. One of the things that Baraxo does is it adds oxygen to the water. Yes, it adds hydrogen peroxide to the water, okay? When you put the Baraxo in the water, when it dissolves, it allows the molecules of the Baraxo to start to come apart and that creates hydrogen peroxide. Everybody's familiar with that. You got the brown bottle in the medicine cabinet says 3%. You put it on a cut and it, and it boils and foams and stuff, okay? Well, that's oxidation. So what it's doing is it's, it's oxidizing the nasty in that cut, if you will, okay? And the bubble is, is the production of oxygen. Braxo does the same thing in your tank. So sometimes in the middle of the week, if my tank gets to stinking a little bit, I'll throw a little bit, you know, a third of a cup of Braxo in the tank, add a little bit more water, and boom, it's done, and then I don't have to worry about it until I'm ready to flush again. Oxygen is the key in the tank, promoting a healthy bacterial assemblage that tends to be more aerobic, requires more oxygen. So the BioGeo method, as I use it, requires plenty of water, occasional use of Baraxo to introduce additional oxygen to the water, and that's it. The occasional addition of some detergent, and really the only reason I add the detergent is to help kind of the water penetrate into the gunk that builds up on the walls of your tanks, and it helps it flush away when you do flush your tanks. 
Speaking of the gunk that accumulates in the walls of your tank, that is what causes your tank monitors to fail. I tell you how many new full-time RVers who are doing video blogs say that, oh, six to nine months in, my black tank monitor quit working. Well, I guarantee you that's because you're not maintaining your tanks correctly. Now, I have a built-in tank whiz-banger that sprays the tank. But even those that have trailers, um, fifth wheels, whatever, that don't have built-in flush systems, you can buy those wands and, and flush your tanks with those. The other thing that I think is a most common cause for the accumulation of materials on the walls of your tanks and so on and so forth is not flushing them correctly. I see many, 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 many RVers when I'm at dump stations or in the RV parks. They'll go out, they open the black tank, out goes that, that's good. Then they go in with the wand and stand there for about five minutes, kind of flush things out. Then they pop back outside, turn everything, hook everything up, bing, bang, they're gone. Okay, that's not long enough. They didn't build up enough water in the tank for it to flush properly. When you're flushing your tanks, you have to think about what's going on inside there. What you want is a rapid escape of the material in the tank, and you want a whirlpool to set up inside of that tank, which helps to carry away that sludge that's laying on the bottom of the tank. The sludge is thick. It's nasty stuff. And just sitting there with a wand over the top of it, spraying water on it, only going to wash a little bit of it away. So by the very nature, you're plugging your tanks up, if you will, and because there's a lot of material that is sticking to the walls and just sitting in the floor and not being carried away, by filling the tank a third of the way full, then pulling the handle and allowing this vortex to develop and to move all of the material out. And as I show you later in the video, I flush a maximum of four, sometimes five times, but most of the time I only flush four times and my tanks run clear and they never stink I don't, I don't add chemicals to them at all other than the occasional addition of Boraxo. So just to review, I use a method that I've created called the Bio-Geo method. I've removed the chlorine from the Geo method because I don't want to kill the bacteria in my tank. I add the Boraxo rather than other water softeners. And by the way, Boraxo does have some water softening capabilities. But the reason I'm adding the Boraxo not only for water softening, is is because it introduces more oxygen to the water, which is critical to promoting aerobic bacteria. They produce humorous or dirt-smelling odors, which are far more palatable to the human nose than the odors methane and hydrogen sulfide that are produced by the anaerobic bacteria, and they oftentimes produce those nasty odors. I guarantee you, if your tank monitors aren't working, you're not flushing your tanks correctly. How to fix that? Do the geo method. Add the soap, the water softener. You know, cost-wise, I think the Braxo, I think I figured it out one time, it's 43 cents per tank to treat. Uh, you know, this stuff's about a dollar per tank. And by the way, if you think you're going to be out for a while, this says it works for seven days. If you're going to be in a hot and climate or you're going to be out for a while, they tell you to use two bottles of this. So, okay, we'll call, that, we'll call it a dollar just to make it easy. So cost-wise, the Braxo is still cheaper. It's much more environmentally friendly as well. There's no chlorine being used and introduced into the environment. And it just flat out works. You can take my word for it or you can try it. you got to start with a clean tank. If you haven't cleaned your tank well, do the geo method. Run it down the road. You might have to do it four or five times. It took me two weeks. I made a cross-country trip doing the geo method on every leg and between Idaho and Virginia six days I finally got it to where it would run somewhat clearer when I was doing my flush so oh and before I forget one of the other things that's really critical is to get a clear segment whether it's up where you do the connection or back where you connect to the RV park sewer system so that you can monitor the quality of the flush or the quality of the material that's exiting the tank absolutely critical so you get a sense for when that tank is clean. I'm going to cut over and I'm going to show you just exactly what it takes to maintain your tank this way as I flush my tanks on a normal everyday Thursday. What I've done is 
I've just put a regular old plastic hose hanger in there and I just keep this black rubber hose that I bought at uh, Harbor Freight. That's a nice Goodyear hose. but hey I only use a little bit anyway so doesn't matter and then on she goes that's my flush okay so we're flushing well, the first things you want to make sure is now the way I run all the time when I'm hooked up is I leave my grain my gray tank open okay that should be right there it fell off I leave that open when I'm sitting here parked at the curb you want to close that because you, you're going to flush uh, uh, black water up into your gray water tank if you don't and that's not something you want to have happen and then it's just basically pull lever and go looks like I got a little leak there and I'll have to address that it's probably the gasket the key is when you're flushing these tanks is to get that swoosh at the end which is what brings out large particulate matter and all the nastiness associated there. This is the swoosh I'm talking about. So this is where all of the big pieces and stuff are coming out. I'll let it run like this for a few minutes until the flow drops down a bit. All right. So I'm going to close that up and I'm going to let this tank fill now for about five minutes. So it's been about five minutes I've been running uh, the sewage rinser. And inside the tank, there's a little head that spins around and it sprays water on the sides of the tank, which helps to wash down some of the tank contents. But again, the, the trick to flush in your tanks is to get plenty of water in them. And then that's the swoosh. It's the let that swoosh happen because that's going to cause a vortex in the tank, which is going to mix up the bottom of that tank. And it's going to let that heavy, sludgy solids come right out. And you do that about two to three more times, and uh, you'll have a clean tank. The second thing is I never put paper in my tank. I have a garbage can sitting right next to the uh, commode, and uh, I just put it in there. And when I got guests coming, I uh, take the little uh, Walmart shopping bag out and throw it away. Uh, that's actually looking really good already. So. Five more minutes, and then we'll pull that handle again and see what we get. Okie doke, it's been about five minutes. And uh, one of the things I do with my tanks pretty regularly, particularly when I'm moving around, is that <clears throat> I'll do a good thorough flush before I leave it in the morning. But then I'll put about uh, 15, 20 gallons of water in the tank. And then I add uh, a cup of Boraxo and a quarter cup of Dawn, Dawn dish soap. And uh, leave that in the tanks and uh, drive around for the day. And then uh, when I get to my destination, I'll immediately flush that tank. And uh, you would be surprised the gunk that'll come out. But all of that sloshing and moving around as you're driving down the road will uh, help you uh, flush out your tanks. Uh, on the gray tank, I do the same thing. And then occasionally, because the gray tank can pick up a bunch of grease from your cooking and so on and so forth, Occasionally, I'll put about five gallons of water in the gray tank, and then I'll add uh, a cup of a citrus cleaner, and I'll show it to you here in a minute. I get it from Home Depot by the gallon. I think it's uh, it's their store brand, I think, but it's a citrus degreaser. But I put about a cup of that in with five gallons of water in the in the gray tank, and uh, run that at the same time I'm doing the black tank treatment. And uh, boy, both of them will just come out and filthy. <laughs> flush them out and uh, so far uh, let's say I rarely if ever get any odor out of my gray tank or black tank so look at the chunks and crud stuff still coming out of there even though it was running clear this is the key two or three of these you gotta get the swoosh. Yep. 
means that vortex is spinning inside that tank and it's moving that water around and uh, picking up any kind of large particulate matter. All right, well, that's looking not too bad. Uh, we're going to do a short cycle this time and just let it go for about two or three minutes. I maintain my tanks the same way every time I flush them, never have any trouble. That's consistency and it's using a lot of water. Well, not a lot of water. I mean, the tank is its a 45 gallon black tank. We were at 85%. Now, was that about 38 gallons, give or take? And then uh, I usually run the tank to about 10 to 15% of capacity on these runs of flush that we're doing right now. So, was that about five, not even five gallons? Yeah, five to eight, seven gallons of water. If I do that three times, I'm using 30 gallons of water roughly. So, uh, you know, it, uh, it seems to be the most efficient and the best way I've found to uh, keep these tanks clean. It's not a chore if you do it uh, regularly and you do it right. Now, for those of you that don't have an internal tank rinser like this, uh, one of those wands works fine. You just have to stand there a while or drop, drop the wand in the tank and let it fill for a while. Um, okay, first thing, keep an eye on it. Uh, you do not want to overrun your black tank. <laughs> that'll be a mess that you'll never forget okay so we're a couple of minutes into this now let's just pull it to see what kind of uh, wash we get all right so that's looking pretty good I don't see too much uh, chunky material or anything like that uh, we'll let that flush down and then I'll close it up and I always start with probably three to five gallons of water in the tank anyway. So water is the key to keeping things diluted, uh, keeping the odors down. I'm really happy with the flush, so we're gonna pull this, call it good in about uh, three to five minutes here. We'll run uh, roughly five gallons of water in. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's how I do it. I gray tank. Sometimes I'll leave it closed for a day or two uh, just to build up a little water in there, but I just did that very recently. I don't have to worry about it. And that, as they say, is that. Till next time, peace.